It's Margot, and today I'm bringing you the bizarre story of an 18th century street performer and extreme medical oddity named Herrera. Being a medical oddity myself, I've always had a fascination with old school sideshow acts and the lives they led. You'll probably think this one is an urban legend, or I'm making it up. I assure you I'm not, though I sincerely hope some aspects have been greatly exaggerated. If you're ready to be shocked, amazed, and horrified, keep watching. Once upon a time, more specifically in 18th century France, lived a very unique young man named Terrer, known far and wide for his very unique appetite. Terrer was born near Lyon, France around 1772. There's no written record of his birth, so it's not even clear if Terrer was his given name or a nickname. Terrer always had a huge appetite. By his teens, he could eat the equivalent of his own weight in a day. At the age of 17, he weighed only 100 pounds, but could eat a quarter of an entire cow in a day. Most of what we know about Terrer comes from the writings of the doctors who closely studied him. He was described as having unusually soft, fair hair and an abnormally wide mouth, roughly four inches between his jaws when his mouth was fully extended, with heavily stained teeth and nearly non-existent lips. The skin of his cheeks was wrinkled and hung loosely, and when stretched out, he could fit a dozen eggs or apples in his mouth. When he hadn't eaten, he could wrap the skin of his abdomen around his entire waist. When full, his abdomen would extend like a balloon. His body was hot to touch, and he'd sweat excessively. He had such a foul body odor, he was described as stinking to such a degree that he could not be endured within the distance of 20 paces. The smell would intensify after he'd eaten. This probably wasn't helped by the fact that he had chronic diarrhea. His eyes and cheeks would become bloodshot, a visible vapor rising from his body. He'd become lethargic, during which time he'd belch noisily and his jaws would make swallowing motions. Despite his insanely large intake of food, he didn't appear to ever vomit excessively or gain weight. Aside from all of this weirdness, his peers saw no apparent signs of mental illness or unusual behavior from him other than an apparent apathy of temperament, described as a complete lack of force and ideas. Unable to afford to feed him, and I dare say tolerate the smell of him, and reportedly freaked out by his odd appearance, Terrer's parents kicked him out of their home. For years, he toured the country with a roaming band of thieves and sex workers, begging and stealing for food, but no matter how much he ate, there was never enough food. Terrer was ravenous 24-7, and particularly fond of snake meat, but he certainly wasn't a picky eater. He eventually got employment as a warm-up act for a charlatan, drawing crowds by eating anything and everything, corks, stones, even live animals. He'd swallow an entire basket full of apples, one after the other. In 1788, Terrer took his act to Paris, where he worked as a street performer, eating everything in his path. He was pretty successful as a showman, but would occasionally suffer intestinal obstructions from eating the inedible. During one show, members of the crowd had to carry him to the Hotel du Hospital, where he was successfully treated with powerful laxatives. In thanks, he offered to demonstrate his act by eating his doctor's watch and chain, to which the surgeon responded that if he did so, he'd cut him open and recover the items. On the outbreak of the War of the First Coalition, Terrer joined the French Revolutionary Army. Unfortunately, military rations were insufficient to satiate his appetite. He'd carry out tasks for other soldiers in return for a share of their rations, and scavenge the dung heap for scraps, but this still wasn't enough to satisfy his hunger. This took a toll on Terrer's health, and he was hospitalized for extreme exhaustion. While in the military hospital, he was granted quadruple rations, but remained hungry. He'd scavenge for garbage in gutters and trash containers, eat scraps of food left by other patients, and eat the poultices from the apothecary. His condition was a mystery to the hospital staff. He was ordered to remain in the military hospital to take part in physiological experiments designed by a Dr. Corville, surgeon to the 9th Husser Regiment, and Pierre-Francois Percy, the hospital's surgeon-in-chief. Doctors Corville and Percy decided to test Herrera's capacity for food. A meal had been prepared for 15 laborers near the hospital gates. The hospital staff normally restrained Terrer in the presence of food. On this occasion, Corville allowed him to reach the table. 
Terrera ate the entire meal, meant for 15 men. This consisted of two large meat pies, plates of grease and salt, and four gallons of milk. He then immediately fell asleep. Corville noted that Terrera's belly became taut and inflated like a large balloon. On another occasion, Terrera ate an entire live cat, then vomited up its fur and skin. Following this, the obviously sadistic hospital staff offered Terrera a variety of other animals, including snakes, lizards, and puppies, all of which were eaten. He also swallowed an entire eel without chewing. After several months of being a hospital lab rat, military authorities demanded Terrera return to active duty. Dr. Corville, in an effort to extend his experimentation, approached General Alexander de Bournay with a suggestion that Terrera's unusual attributes could be put to military use. A document was placed inside a wooden box, which was fed to Terrera. Two days later, the box was retrieved from his excrement, with the document still legible. Corville proposed to de Bournay that Terrera could serve as a military courier, carrying documents through enemy territory, with no risk of their being intercepted if he was searched. Terrera demonstrated his abilities before a gathering of the commanders of the Army of the Rhine. After swallowing the box successfully, Terrera was given a wheelbarrow filled with 30 pounds of raw bull's lungs and liver as a reward, which he immediately ate in front of the assembly of generals. Terrera was then officially employed as a spy of the Army of the Rhine. Though convinced of Terrera's physical ability to carry messages internally, General de Bournay was concerned about his mental state and didn't initially trust him with significant military documents. It turns out that was a good call. Terrera's first assignment was to carry a message to a French colonel imprisoned by the Prussians near Neustadt. He was told that the documents were of great military significance, but in reality, the general had merely written a note asking the colonel to confirm that the message had been received and to reply with any potentially useful information about Prussian troop movements. Terrer crossed Prussian lines under cover of darkness, disguised as a German peasant. Unable to speak German, he soon attracted unwanted attention and was quickly apprehended. A strip search turned up nothing suspicious, and despite being whipped by Prussian soldiers, Terrer refused to betray his mission. Brought before the local Prussian commander, General Zogli, he again refused to talk and was imprisoned. After 24 hours of captivity, Terrer gave in and explained the scheme to his captors. He was chained to a latrine, and 30 hours after being swallowed, the wooden box emerged. Zogli was furious to find that the documents, which Terrer had said contained vital intelligence, only contained chit-chat. Some sources give an alternate version of these events, stating that Zogli never actually retrieved the box, as Terrer ate the stool containing it before it could be seized by the Prussians. Either way, Terrer was taken to a gallows, a noose placed around his neck. But at the last minute, Zogli relented. Terrer was taken down from the scaffold, given a severe beating, and released near the French lines. After this terrifying ordeal, Terrer had no further desire for military service and returned to the hospital. He told Dr. Percy he'd attempt any possible cure for his appetite. Percy treated him unsuccessfully with laudanum, followed by similarly unsuccessful treatments of wine vinegar and tobacco pills. Following these failures, Percy fed Terrer large quantities of soft-boiled eggs in another fruitless attempt to suppress his appetite. Efforts to keep Terrer on any kind of controlled diet failed. He'd sneak out of the hospital to scavenge for offal outside butcher shops and fight stray dogs for scraps in gutters, alleys, and trash heaps. Even more disturbingly, he was also caught several times drinking from patients within the hospital who were undergoing bloodletting, and even attempted to eat the bodies in the hospital morgue. Other doctors believed that Terrer was mentally ill and insisted he be transferred to a lunatic asylum, but Dr. Percy didn't want to stop his experiments and kept Terrer at the military hospital for a bit longer. After a while, a 14-month-old child disappeared from the hospital, and Terrer was immediately suspected of eating them. Percy was unable to defend him, and the hospital staff chased Terrer from the hospital. He never returned. Four years later, in 1798, an M. Tessier of Versailles Hospital contacted Dr. Percy to notify him that a patient of theirs wished to see him. It was Terrer, now bedridden and weak. 
Terrer told Percy that he had swallowed a golden fork two years earlier, which he believed was lodged inside him and causing his current weakness. He hoped that Percy could find some way to remove it. Percy, however, recognized that Terrer had advanced tuberculosis. A month later, Terrer began to experience continuous diarrhea, dying shortly afterwards. Doctors estimated him to be about 26 years old. Terrer's corpse rotted quickly, and the hospital surgeons refused to dissect it. Tessier, however, wanted to find out how Terrer differed from the norm internally, and was also curious if the gold fork was actually lodged inside him. During the autopsy, Terrer's gullet was found to be abnormally wide, and when his jaws were opened, surgeons could see down a broad canal into his stomach. His body was found to be filled with pus, his liver and gallbladder abnormally large, and his stomach enormous, riddled with ulcers and filling most of his abdominal cavity. The fork was never found. The cause of Terrer's bizarre eating habits was never discovered. While there have been other documented cases of similar behavior from that period, Terrer was the only subject autopsied. There have been no modern documented cases resembling Terrer's. That's all I have for you today. I hope you've enjoyed this story and will come back for more. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, and bring your friends, family, COVID pod, cult members, invisible friends, or enemies. And if you have any thoughts on which afflictions may have driven Terrer's insatiable appetite, leave them in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching.